turning a point cloud into a 3D mesh. That is exactly what I'm going to show you today. So why do we do that? Basically, for some application, like if you want to 3D print a point cloud, or if you want to uh, put some data into a video game, if you want to have some kind of decimation technique to simplify a point cloud, for example, or if you want to interpolate a um, point clouds that represent the ground for making a DTM, then one way to do it is to transform your point cloud data into a topologically sound surface, which is your mesh. So how do we do that? Basically, you have two buckets. The first bucket will be to use a software, um, and the second bucket will be to use Python or a coding uh, language for you to have a bit more freedom. The first bucket will be a very uh, useful if you don't have the skills, the expertise to code yourself, or if you already know a software that makes um, exactly what you want to do. So for this bucket, you have uh, three options, three main options which are open, which are a Cloud Compare, which is a software that is mostly geared toward point cloud. But if you want to turn a point cloud into a DTM, that will be my way to go. The second option would be MeshLab. This has a lot more uh, algorithm implemented, right? So you can have a bit more freedom about what you want to do with your point cloud. And the third option will be Blender. And here it will be a bit more manual, but you have more um, control on the overall result of your, um, your work with your point cloud. So I will not cover that today. I will put that in another video. If you comment down below that you would like to see how I do that with such software, that will be my pleasure to do that. But for today, I will give you the tools to do exactly that with Python. So why do we do that? Um, the software is basically, you have to consider that um, as coding, but with a GUI on top of it, which makes everything much more abstracted. It's much uh, simpler to go into it, but you have less freedom to do stuff. With Python, basically you will do whatever you want. I will show you um, how to do that step by step. If you're ready, it's time to get coding and I will show you exactly how to do that. Right, so now we are onto uh, my computer. Basically, I have an environment setup, which has two main libraries that you can see, which are NumPy and Open3. If you don't have them, I recommend that you check another video that I will link where you can see how to simply set up your environment to get started coding with Python. So once you are set up, what you have to do is first importing the library. So here I'm on Spider, I just set that to my um, working directory and I launch this little cell. Basically now I have NumPy and Open3 which are both imported. The second step is to load and prepare the data. So usually what I do is I have a code folder that will hold all my code and I will have a data folder and a results folder. All of this folder are at the same level, which means that my code, which is in the code folder, I need to get one level out of it and then go into the data folder. To get one level out of it, so to get the parent directory, you put that and then I say I want to go into the data folder and I don't forget the backslash, right? Same thing for the output path. And then my data name is this one. You will find, of course, the data, um, the tutorial, and the code down below. I link everything. It's open, of course, for you to, to get these skills to your quiver. Um, and that's what we will be using. So basically, I will execute this. Uh, and what's happening is this is a point cloud as an XYZ file format. So it's basically XYZ plus some kind of features. The features here are RGB and the normals, right? So to visualize that within Python, there is a very cool library called Open3D. Um, I recommend that if you want to use that, work locally or um, within Colab or uh, Jupyter-based environment. If you want to plot that in a cell, you have some new function to do that with Plotly, but it will not be as interactive, right? So now, <clears throat> as you can see, this is my point cloud. So once I zoom in, you can see that I have a lot of points. This um, is actually acquired with only my camera and uh, photogrammetry. So also, if you're interested into how to turn uh, some images into a nice point cloud like this, leave a comment below and I will show you how to do that. Right, <clears throat> one thing to note is that I have normal. So if I press N, you can see all my normals and they are nicely um, matching my point cloud surface. And another thing uh, which would be nice to see is uh, you can also play with your point granularity with plus and minus so that you have a better idea about uh, what your point looks like. Right, so this is our started point cloud. What did I do to be able to visualize? It's very simple. I had to change my NumPy object into an open 3D object to be able to visualize that. So what did I do? First, I load it as a uh, NumPy object here with NumPy load text, 
right? And I put my input path plus the sample data name. I skipped the first row because that's where I had uh, the name of my column. And I created a variable point cloud that hosts all of this. Then what I did as a second step is I created an um, open 3D point cloud object. Right? In Python, everything is an object. And then I filled the point attributes with the points and the color attributes with the colors uh, as floats and the normals with the normals. And then I just plot that. So if you want to have a bit more understanding about what exactly holds that, right? This is um, playing with the indexes. If I would like to plot the NumPy point cloud object, as you can see, you have X, Y, Z, uh, RGB and normal X, normal Y, normal Z. So to select only some columns, I'm using the indexer here to do just that. Right, so that's the second step, loading and preparing the data. Now we can move on to third step, which is choosing a meshing strategy. So I will highlight two strategies here. The first one is called ball pivoting algorithm. Let me clarify that with the article that I wrote. So basically the ball pivoting algorithm. You have to imagine that you want on the surface of your point cloud, um, you, you put a little ball on which you, you choose the radius and every time it falls and it's uh, held, held sorry, by two points, then it will create this little uh, triangle, right? So two points like this, but normally it's three points. If it's fall within, it will not create any triangle. So the deal here is to try and actually um, know exactly what will be the size of your ball. And here I illustrate what happens. So if you take a too small radius, as you can see, you will have a lot of holes in your mesh. And if you have a too big radius, you will have uh, this kind of triangles that will be um, created, right? Uh, and also you have an impact of the number of triangles that you have. So it's a bit of a compromise um, that you have to choose, that you have ways to de delineate that automatically. Here is just the first approach to do that and to experiment with that. So how does that work? pragmatically with the code. One thing that I do is first I want to determine the radius in an automatic way. So for that, you have a um, function that you can use compute nearest neighbor distance on your point cloud. So if I would do that, uh, compute nearest neighbor distance on my point cloud, it's a huge matrix because actually for each point it does this and it gives you uh, the distance. Um, so let me, uh, then after I just take the average of that, and then my radius will be the three times my average distance to make sure that actually my ball can um, hold on some point. So that is perfectly arbitrary, but it's a nice trick and I think um, it will help you uh, definitely if you are into this uh, sort of things, trying to put your point cloud into a mesh. Right, then I will compute the mesh. So once I have my radius, I compute the mesh with the ball pivoting algorithm, create from point cloud ball pivoting. I give it my point cloud, PCD, right? And I give actually a double vector, which is the radius and the radius multiplied by two. That is the last trick to be able to compute the mesh. And then we will draw the mesh and see what, what happens. So we'll launch that. And uh, while it's happening, I will explain what is happening uh, down below. So that will be the first mesh. And as you can see, I like to put a window name to know exactly what I'm plotting. So here it will be the PPA mesh. Another thing that you can do, and you will see that the difference is actually decimating, so post-processing your mesh to make it a bit nicer. And for that, you have a way to simplify with aquatic decimations and to choose uh, exactly what will be the target number of triangles that you would like to have. So it's very nice to have that so that you have a compromise between quality and number of triangles. It's always a bit of a balance to have not too many triangles, but a nice approximation of the base point cloud, right? And the last thing is, this is optional, is um, you can clean your mesh basically uh, by de deleting the generate triangles, duplicated triangle vertices and the edges that are non-manifold. So this is what you get. It really looks like the point cloud, but it's actually the mesh, as you can see. Um, what I can do maybe is uh, show you, yeah, show you the different way to visualize it. Nice, right? Uh, this is the the mesh that you obtain. And another thing is, I can uh, delete the light source, activate it again and I can maybe bring in uh, the shading, which is how you want to reflect the light. So that will be uh, very, very um, uh, like getting all variation. This is smoothing operator that will operate on it for the, for the visualization. But you can see you have a lot of triangle. And if I do that, you see all the triangles that we created, right? So this is very nice. Now I'm decimating the mesh and we'll see what happens uh, with the decimated mesh. And then after we'll run onto the next strategy.
And here we are, we have the result of the decimation and as you can see it was maybe a bit heavy, right, because we now have uh, a lot less triangles but it still looks like we are approximating nicely the shape at this stage. All right. So that was the BPA approach or ball pivoting algorithm. Now let's move on to the second strategy, which is the Poisson reconstruction. I will uh, maybe take a bit of a look at the article that I wrote. Basically, um, you want to envelope your uh, point cloud into a cloth, right? And you have two main parameters, which is the depth, which is uh, the higher you will have uh, depth, the more detail you will get. And you have uh, the scale, depending on the scale, as you can see, you will have something more or less uh, watertight. And the width is the finest level of the tree structure, which is called an oak tree. So basically, this is just a cube assembly. And the more you go uh, down, the, the, the better it is. Right. So as you can see with the depth, you have massive impact using this and also using the scale you have uh, various changes especially on the down part but also on the details that you can get so this is up to you to choose these parameters um, usually poisson reconstruction work really well for watertight mesh whereas ppa will work for any mesh right so for poisson this time what do i do i first compute the mesh to do that i will create a new variable poisson mesh and I will uh, use the function create for point cloud poisson. I give the point cloud, the depth, the width, and the scale. That you can leave it to false, and I execute. So that will be my poisson mesh. And the second thing that I will do, you will see, is that I will actually crop my mesh because we don't want the below part. So this is my mesh, and the strategy that I use to crop is actually getting the bounding box of my point cloud which is here, there are no points here, and using that to create a fitting box that I will use to crop my mesh. So that is a nice little trick. And as you can see, this is what you get. And finally, what we can do here is uh, compute some kind of triangle normals so that we have a way to nicely visualize the point cloud, uh, sorry, the mesh. So here, that is our mesh, final mesh with Poisson. And we uh, could play around with all these uh, different fields. This is the normals. Um, that you can put on, on top of it, or this is without any color. So that is nice to see actually the geometry. I will activate with Z to check all the triangles that we have. And we see that we have some small triangles, but overall it's pretty smooth, right? And if I activate the smooth ratio, this is what we could get. So this is why I really love to um, play around with Python, Open3D and NumPy. So it's actually two only libraries on top of Python because you can really quickly get a workflow from point cloud to mesh, have a lot of freedom to choose the strategy and also the way you want to visualize um, your mesh within Open3D. So it's pretty nice. And the last thing, but that's a bonus, is actually exporting the data. So it's very easy to export the data. I just write uh, all 3 d write um, triangle. I use my output path that I defined before and I will export as PLY, both the decimated mesh and the mesh crop from Poisson. So I do that, it's finished. And now if I go onto my folder, which is here, the result folder, which is here, you can see that they have both my mesh. So if I double click on the PPA mesh, for now I open it with Cloud Compare, which is a nice piece of software. I will have other videos on it, but basically, you will see that now you work within Python and you worked outside of Python so, the, the, so that you can actually plug all that we see here to your own application, which is super nice, right? It opens, I have this little window, I make apply all and this is my mesh. So one thing to note is I have uh, um, exported and I have a bit of um, <laughs> the Z coordinate may not be straight because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's rotating in a weird manner. Nevertheless, you have EDL to see, and you see that you have your mesh uh, pretty nicely shown. If you put it here, you can have the wireframe so that you can see all the triangles. And the last bonus is if you want to export various levels of detail, I added this little uh, function creation here, where you actually will choose um, uh, simplifying credit decimation that I will choose uh, with a BPA approach, right? The PPA mesh, I will take it and I will decimate every time to get a lower and lower level of details so that you can actually use that in your video game application at a certain distance 
from your point of view, uh, you will use the lowest um, level um, of detail and when you're very close you will use the highest level of detail so that you don't need so much computing power to display everything on the screen. That is a very nice strategy. That's a wrap, guys. So as you as you saw, it's very, very uh, powerful what you can do with Python to turn a point cloud into a 3D mesh. I will now focus on other applications. So please drop down below the comments about what you would like me to address and I will make sure to do that. I'm setting myself to do at least one video per week. Hopefully I can um, fall onto that. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a great week. Bye bye.